Hello chess friends, this is Nazmi Can. In this video I will try to focus on the world champion Magnus Carlsen's combinations. Of course Magnus Carlsen is not famous with his attacking display or brilliant combinations, but still, as he is the greatest player of our times, he is one of the best at chess tactics too. In the first part of the videos I will mainly focus on the earlier days of Magnus Carlsen's chess career and this game comes from the year of 2002. And in his first game, as we see, White King is exposed and it has no protection. All the white pieces are far from the fence. Only Queen protects the G3 rank and this um, doesn't allow Black to invade on G3. For this reason, Carlsen gives a decisive blow in order to deflect this Queen. You can stop your video at any time to look for the solution yourself. In this position Magnus Carlsen played the move bishop takes d4 as I said in order to deflect the white queen from d3 and in this position white resigned but let's see what can happen uh, what could happen in the game if a white player decided to continue he can play king g2 or king h1 or he can take on d4 of course we have to look what happens after queen takes d4 then queen g3 check as I said g3 is no longer protected and after king h1 takes and now black can finish the game off with the move rook f2 threatening mate in 1 and this can only be averted by the move queen takes f2 but after queen takes f2 as you see black's game is simply winning so apart from queen takes d4, white can also play king h1 and this also doesn't change the situation because after rook f2 um, the mate on h2 cannot be prevented apart from giving a lot of material. And also the last move king g2 can be met by the same style, checkmate on h2. So after bishop d4, understandably, a uh, white player resigned. Okay, let's move on to the second game. And this game comes from the year of 2003. Against a high rest opponent, Magnus Carlsen gets a chance to exploit somewhat loose positions of white pieces. You can stop your video at any time to figure it out yourself. In the game, white played the unfortunate move 92, hoping to castle next move but Magnus Carlsen doesn't give his opponent time to do so and he starts with the move bishop h3 the idea is just simply removing this protector of e4 pawn g2 bishop in the game white played the move b4 but we should check the alternatives what happens after bishop takes h3 let's say white can that black can take on e4, attacking queen, and these variations show that loose positions of white pieces cause a white trouble. Queen has to protect b2 bishop, and f2 is hanging. So let's say after the moves like queen c2, black can simply grab material and play the moves like queen e3, threatening a whole lot of stuff like knight f2, knight b4 cannot take on g7 because there is knight b4 move and black is simply winning because white wants to jump on d3 and the other knight wants to go to f2 let's say queen b2 is impossible because there is this move and um, black will win the queen after king e1 knight bv3 there are of course many many moves in this position uh, after bishop h3 knight takes e4 White can also play queen e3, but this time black can simply take a whole lot of material after exchange of the queens, and this gives him a simply a winning position. So, if white castles, black can simply take the pawn on e4 and uh, simply winning in this position. So, in the game. Finding no moves, white played the move b4. I also checked the move bishop takes f6, trying to 
get some pieces but this gives black a chance to take on g2 and after takes black can simply take on g7 and this gives another chance to capture on e4 so for this reason white played the move b4 but this doesn't solve his problems and after taking on c4 knight a3 knight takes e4 as we see loose positions of white pieces besides the game and black is simply material up after knight takes d2 bishop c6 knight c4 take on g7 king takes g7 bishop b7 and as you see black is simply an exchange and a pawn up and the, the game continues uh, somewhat more but I don't uh, go deeper so black is completely winning and let's move on to the next game and another game played in the same year of 2003 and this position arises after white's careless queen takes e4 move this move gives black a chance to finish the game off in a brilliant fashion you can stop your video at any time to figure it out yourself in this position Carlson played the move rook takes g3 sacrificing a whole rook in order to exploit the weaknesses of the white king which is not protected by any white pieces after f takes g3 queen takes g3 we can see that queen g2 is not available because e1 rook is hanging and after king h2 black can simply continue his attack by playing rook f4 threatening this way and also white has no ideas to stop um, black's attack let's say queen g3 but then there's this move queen e2 if king h1 there is rook f1 if here then there is rook f3 completely winning so for this reason white played the move king h1 and lonely queen cannot give mate but other pieces should join the attack and rook f4 was played for this reason double threat double attack on the queen and rook h4 mate white plays the move queen takes f4 equals the res resignation but there is no solution it seems that queen e8 gives some chance for white because king h7 is not available because there is rook h5 and white is surviving after this move because he can take on h5 with the queen and also rook can join the attack but unfortunately for white after queen e8 black can simply play bishop f8 and there is a threat of rook h4 and the game is over so for this reason white resigned himself to play without a queen but after queen takes f4 as you can see white kings uh, too exposed and it's very hard to uh, defend for white in this position and he played the move rook e8 check and king f7 attacking the rook king c8 rook c8 and after the move queen f5 and bishop e5 you can see that uh, white has to give a lot of material after this move and black shortly won the game this is another brilliant victory for Magnus Carlsen in the early days of his career. A more complicated example this time. Magnus Carlsen placed his forces ideally on the king side. As you can see, queen, rook, knights and the bishop looking very nice on their squares. And with, it, with his next move, the c2 bishop comes into attack with decisive effect. And Carlson plays the move e5 in this position, opening up the bishop's diagonal and trying to deflect the f pawn from defending the g5 knight. So black is almost forced to capture on e5 with his d pawn. And in this position, you can stop your video in order to figure out how to continue the game. And in this position, Carlson played the move knight h5, sacrificing a knight. In this position, black has many options but to no avail he can capture the knight with king or the knight with g pawn or he can 
try to run away with his king but first of all king h8 move doesn't work because there is bishop takes g5 move and after f takes g5 as you can see after queen g3 attacking the e5 pawn and creating a mating idea on this diagonal black is helpless queen cannot go to defense because there is knight f7 and if he tries to defend with bishop d6 now there is a simple queen takes g5 move threatening mate in one and if he tries to defend the f6 square and e5 pawn in this way then white has another idea to give mate with the move queen e7 threatening mate and this will finish the game off so after knight h5 maybe black can try to capture on h6 but after a simple move knight f6 discovered attack on the king white can continue the attack with bishop takes g5 move preparing all kinds of uh, checkmate patterns first queen h7 is threatened and if rook can cover here then there is bishop h6 and also f file is also uh, protected by the rook so this would not help black and if king f8 there is also this move bishop takes g5 and which will be followed by um, bishop takes f6 if he captures on f h5 for example for this reason black sees no point and captures the knight on h5 and it's also another time to stop your video to figure out how to continue because Carlsen gives mate in 3 in this position he played the move queen takes g5 check and king cannot run away because there is mate in 1 moves if knight is 7 and queen g8 mate so he has to play the move f takes g5 but this allows mate in 2 Rook f7 check and in the game black captured the knight on h6 and checkmated with the move rook h7 it's of course no help playing king h8 because there is rook h7 checkmate 2 a very nice powerful example of playing a kingside attack which starts the move with the move e5 and Carlson played the brilliantly uh, with the knight sacrifice and queen sacrifice and in this example again white plays his forces ideally but black has also counter chances due to the pin on the e-file and for the moment knight d6 threat is not available due to the bishop on a3 and for this reason Carlson played a nice continuation in order to play this knight d6 idea you can stop your video in order to figure out how to make use of this d6 square with the knight and Carlson goes for the action with the move b4 simply threatening the d6 square with the knight and also creating a direct threat on the bishop so probably black is forced to capture on b4 in order to get rid of this threat and Carlson simply played the move a3 attacking the bishop and bishop cannot run away because of threat knight d6 and black played the move knight b6 counter attacking the c4 bishop and Carlson takes with the a pawn and after knight takes c4 this is the last time for the tactics and Carlson played the move knight d6 check it can be seen that both queens are under attack so black probably looks for a tactical solution himself and he played the move king d7 but after knight takes d6 it's also possible to see that 
Whitefield have an exchange up with a winning position. But this could be a better alternative to the game because after King d7, White has a finishing touch with the move. Queen takes e7 because he doesn't want to capture the queen immediately after knight takes. Black can simply take on e3 and gets a normal game. And for this reason, Carlson captured e7 with his queen and after takes and knight takes f5, he's an exchange up and he went on the win the end game. I don't delve deeper in this position, so let's move on to the next example. And another example of attacking the king. And this is a simpler one. In this game, Carlson simply checkmates his grandmaster opponent in two moves. You can stop your video in order to figure it out yourself. And in the game, Carlson played the move bishop g6, opening up the e-file and trying to lure the king in the g6 square in order to mate him on h5 square. After takes, queen h5 is mate, and if rook takes, there is queen e7 mate. For this reason, after bishop g6 move, Hagi Gretersen resigned in this position. Okay, let's move on to the next game. And this is another position from the same year of 2003. And this position arises after just 10 moves. Something went wrong for black in the opening. He was trying to protect the c4 pawn, which was offered in the opening Queen's Gambit. And now he's facing the troubles. You can stop your video in order to figure out how to continue the fight. And now Magnus Carlsen begins a direct attack with a peace sacrifice. And he played the move knight takes b5, simply trying to destroy the pawn chain on the queen side. He's threatening to take on c4 next move, so black captures the knight on b5. And now double attack arises, attacking the queen on f7. Black played the move queen b7, bishop f7, king d8, and now Carlson simply played the move bishop d2, creating direct bishop a5 idea, winning. And black played the move e6. I also consider the alternatives, but let's look one final line after knight c6, trying to cover the a5 square. But this will not help because there is this move. And simply white can renew the idea of bishop a5. And after this, there is rook c1 move. Black is simply helpless. And if queen b5, let's say, trying to cover the queen side, but this time there is rook c5. And white will continue with queen a4 and rook c7. He is completely winning. Black played the move e6 in this position. And after bishop a5, king e7, white simply played the move queen a4 trying to checkmate the opponent by means of queen a3 and black played knight d5 here trying to escape with the move king f6 he can also play the other moves but that won't help him let's say after knight d7 or something like that there's queen a3 simply there is no way to go for the black king he played the move knight d5 and after king queen e8, king f6, knight g4, it seems that black king will not survive after h4, sacrificing the knight. But there's bishop takes e6 and black is getting mated soon after the move takes, takes and g4 checkmate. A very nice attack in this play by Magnus Carlsen. Okay, let's move on to the next example. And for the last game of this first part of the videos on Carlson's combinations, I choose a game which Carlson managed to beat his strong grandmaster opponent Sergei Dolmatov in a brilliant fashion. 
This is a great example of playing against the king in the center. After 13 moves, black couldn't complete his development and his king remained uncastled and white forces fully developed and they are ready for the action. And you can try to figure it out yourself by stopping your video. In this position, Carlson starts with the move. Rook takes e7, sacrificing an exchange in order to weaken the d6 square and trying to open up the d file. While playing against the king in center, you should try to open up the central files. And also, this bishop protects this f6 knight, and by removing, removing this bishop, white creates an unpleasant pin on this diagonal. Queen takes e7. And queen f4, a double attack, trying to attack both d6 and f5 squares. Bishop d7. And now white plays the move knight d4. A very strong move. He, uh, Magnus Carlsen is not in a hurry to capture the d6. He is increasing the pressure on uh, this knight, which is pinned badly on the h4 d8 diagonal. Sergei Dolmatov trying to get rid of this ideas on d6 square. He played the move d5 and prepares after knight f6 the move h6. He's simply trying to capture the bishop or the knight. And after bishop h4, his idea was to play g5, but after the move queen d4, white simply winning material. In this position, Sergei Domato resigned, but let's check what might happen if black captures on h4, then white has knight takes d5, double attack, and also white managed to open up the d file, which is decisive, and black could try rook f8, trying to attack both of these guys, but this time, white can finish the game off easily with the move knight d7, simply grabbing the bishop, and after queen takes bishop g3, white has two bishops against rook, and his attack still continues, and Sagi Domoto called it a day, and didn't res resume the game, and he resigned here. Okay. I hope you like the combinations and I will continue on this topic. See you in the next videos.